children let's continue with the next part of the chapter life processes we are going to start with nutritional animals today as we have discussed in the earlier part nutritional animals is heterotrophic that means they are dependent on others for food we can always say that the nutrition of unicellular and multicellular organism is different uh, based on the number of cells they have multicellular because they are made up of many cells there are group of cells which performs the function of digestion now when we look at nutrition in amoeba which is a microscopic unicellular protista uh, the nutrition in amoeba is holozoic and it is carried out by certain false feet like structure which are called as pseudopodia pseudo means false podia means feet now if with the help of this diagram you will be able to understand how amoeba obtain its food and digest its food you can see a uh, amoeba which has a irregular structure a nucleus cytoplasm certain cell organelles like lysosomes and they also have a plasma membrane say a food particle which can be a small protozoan or a algae or whatifers when it comes near the body of amoeba the amoeba make two pseudopodia like structure which forms a cavity into which the food particle can be engulfed into the part of the cell membrane which is also called as phagocytosis when the two pseudopodia meet they form a structure which is called as food vacuole the food particle is taken into the food vacuole and then the lysosomes which are acting as a digestive organelle in the amoeba body start releasing certain enzymes and these enzymes will be carrying out carrying out the function of digestion in amoeba and the food will be digested when the food is digested it would be used for all the different metabolic processes growth and reproduction and whatever left is thrown out of the body of amoeba through pl through plasma membrane and this process is called as ejection now when we categorize the steps of nutrition they are basically categorized into five sub parts ingestion which means eating or taking in food digestion which means breaking down of complex food into simpler particles absorption soluble digested food is absorbed into the body fluids assimilation the absorbed food are transported to tissues and cells in different parts of the body and last ejection that means undigested and an absorbed solid residue is expelled from the body of the organism children let's start with the human digestive system now the human digestive system consists of a alimentary canal it runs directly from the mouth which is a coiled structure it's a long muscular coiled structure which is about 8 to 10 meters in length it starts from mouth and it ends at anus now when we have to talk about the different parts of human digestive system we'll go one by one as you have seen in your earlier classes it starts from mouth which is called as oral cavity then it goes to a long tube like structure called as esophagus then it goes into j shaped structure called as stomach then it goes into small intestine then large intestine it the undigested food is stored in rectum and then it goes to anus now let's do these structures one by one their structures and their function for example when we start with the first organ oral cavity it of course it is also called as mouth now there are three things which are present in mouth it has teeth it has tongue it has salivary glands these are the internal structures and of course jaws and cheeks and lips which are present on the external side teeth as you know are basically we have two sets of teeth in 16 row each in different in two jaws and they make 32 in number in total they are present as incisors canines premolars and molars and in the ratio 2 is to 1 is to 2 is to 3 then we have another structure called as tongue which is a muscular sensory organs and it has taste bur taste buds which basically uh, sensitize the human body to the different taste sour so sweet bitter etc 
and when we have this muscular tongue it ha helps in two major purposes in digestion it helps in the mixing of food with saliva and it also helps in one process called as deglutition which is also called as swallowing of small food in the bowls called as bolus and third we have salivary glands there are three sets of salivary glands in human parotid sublingual and some maxillary and these glands secrete a secretion which is called as saliva saliva is very important for digestion one it softens the food and second it has a very important enzyme called as salivary amylase and this is also known as tylen P is silent, and this helps in breaking down of malto of sugars, basically which are present in our food, into simple sugars called as maltose. The second part of the body of the alimentary canal is esophagus. Esophagus is basically uh, the funnel-shaped pharynx leads to esophagus, which is almost ten inch long. It does not play any role in digestion as such. the muscles which are present in esophagus contracts and relax rhythmically and push the food downwards through a movement which is called as peristalsis the food from esophagus reaches stomach it is a j shaped thick walled muscular structure which is present on the left side of abdomen and it act as a storehouse of food and the stomach also possesses gastric glands the glands which are present in stomach are called as gastric glands and they secrete certain secretions the three secretions are they secrete an enzyme called as pepsin p for pepsin p for protein so pepsin is an enzyme which is helping in digesting proteins present in our food the gastric glands secrete hcl which is called as dilute hydrochloric acid it provides a acidic medium for the pepsin to act um, for the proteins to digest the pepsin is needed and pepsin can be activated only in a acidic medium so the stomach is secreting hcl the second use of hcl is it kills the harmful germs which enters the body through the mouth the third important secretion is mucus as the acid is secreted into the body it can damage the inner lining of the stomach so to protect the inner lining of stomach from the action of acid the mucus is secreted through this the semi soluble digested food which is now called as chyme is passed on to the next organ through a sphincter and then the food reaches small intestine the small intestine is a highly coiled narrow structure this is a structure where basically the complete digestion and absorption of food takes place the small intestine has secretions coming from the associated digestive glands which includes liver and pancreas along with the intestinal glands which are present in small intestine let's discuss the liver it is the largest gland of the body it secretes a juice which is called as bile juice the bile juice is stored in gall bladder till the time the food is not available in the stomach when the food is there in the stomach the bile juice will come out from the gall bladder through bile duct and it will help in digestion of food through pigments bile pigments and certain salts now what are the functions of bile why it is secreted it has three major functions it makes the medium alkaline just go back uh, to stomach we have just read that stomach has an acidic medium because of hcl to help in the function of pepsin now the when the food is in the small intestine it has to be made alkaline and it is made by bile juices to help the intestinal enzymes to digest food second it helps in a very important process called as emulsification of fats fats as you know are water insoluble and the body of 
human body is basically 70% water so the fat has to be broken down into smaller pieces which is called as micelles these micelles basically provide more surface area for the enzyme to act upon the lipid molecules and the digestion of lipids becomes easy that is why emulsification of fats through bile is very important third the bile provide color to the feces which is also called as undigested food which comes out through anus the next gland is pancreas it secretes pancreatic juice it has basically three enzyme trypsin as the pepsin is a digesting protein similarly trypsin also helps in breaking proteins into peptones and then into small amino acids l for lipase l for lipids helps in breakdown of lipids and fats into fatty acids at glycerol now the third enzyme in pancreatic juice is pancreatic amylase similarly to salivary amylase the pancreatic amylase breaks down the carbohydrates into sugar now along with the accessory accessory gastric glands the intestinal gland secretes interna, intestinal juice uh, which completes the process of digestion carbohydrates or the starch converts into glucose fats are converted into fatty acids and glycerol proteins are converted into amino acids till here the maximum digestion in the human body gets completed now the food will be absorbed through the small intestine it for this the small intestine has minute finger like projections which are called as villi and these villi basically provide greater surface area and this increases the absorptive capacity of the body now when the food absorbed energy is taken up by villi the villi will send it to uh, is supplied with thin blood capillaries rich with blood this will pass the blood into blood capillaries and this will take the blood, uh, the energy through blood into different cells and organs and this energy then will be used in building up new tissues new cells repair of the old and damaged cells in the body and it also helps in release of energy for the different metabolic processes last the food which is used will be converted into energy atp and the excess food which is not used at the particular move, particular moment will be stored as a storage compound called as glycogen it will be stored in liver of the different mammals and sometimes it is also stored as fat the subcutaneous fats in the adipose tissue that we have learned in class 9 now the last part is large intestine the large intestine will get the undigested food from uh, from the small intestine the large intestine will reabsorb the water and salts from it and it will give it back to the body now this semi solid undigested food is now called as feces or fecal matter will be sent to the rectum it will be stored there for some time and then it will be pass from it will pass out ejected out from the human body through a pore which is called as anus the topic is over and the next in the next topic will be talking about the respiration uh, in animals and if this topic is clear just provide your feedback on whatsapp or write the comments below